Senator, Emperor, Dark Lord of the Sith, Palpatine. There are plenty of lesser villains that pop up within the Star Wars universe, from bounty hunters like Boba Fett to Sith assassins like Darth Maul, but there is no greater villain to threaten the galaxy than Palpatine. Conniving, deceptive, and extremely powerful, Palpatine started out as an ambitious child and went on to reshape the galaxy as he saw fit. This video will mostly focus on Palpatine's early years, but it should give some further insight to those who have only seen the films. Sheev Palpatine was born on the planet Naboo to the wealthy family of House Palpatine. He was raised in the quiet lake country of Naboo, a couple hours away from the capital, and at a young age realized that he was different from his peers. Recognizing a great power within himself and a natural inclination towards leadership, he quickly got involved in politics. House Palpatine was vaguely involved with the politics of Naboo, but the boy wished for a much more active role. His father, however, was satisfied with his family's position, expanding feelings of animosity between father and son. During his youth, Palpatine also grew an interest in ancient Sith lore, forbidden for legal reading. He would spend part of his family's considerable wealth on acquiring tomes off of the black market. Palpatine would grow up being educated in the finest schools, but would continue to be expelled for various misdemeanors. This would have led to imprisonment for most, but Palpatine's father continued to use his wealth and influence to protect his son. One such incident involved young Palpatine crashing a newly gifted speeder from his father, killing two pedestrians. Rather than feeling remorse for the incident, it only spurned Palpatine to go into professional racing. When Palpatine was 17, he decided to involve himself in the politics of Naboo, actively working against his father. His father lobbied the government to remain isolationist, to avoid unwanted attention from various corporations and trading federations. The up-and-coming politician vying for the throne, Topalo, was eager to open Naboo up to the galaxy at large. Palpatine, seeing this as his opportunity to help push Naboo into the spotlight, leaked secret documents incriminating a number of houses that were in opposition to Topalo. Meanwhile, Higo Damask, head of the financial lobbying company Damask Holdings, learned about a large reserve of plasma that was supposedly located in the mines under the capital city on Naboo. Plasma was useful for a number of different weapon systems, and the quantity under the city would be worth a substantial sum. Damask began supporting Topalo's candidacy with the agreement that they would have exclusive rights to the plasma reserves. While looking into the political situation on Naboo, they discovered that Palpatine was responsible for the leaked documents, and Higo decided to meet with the ambitious teenager. Palpatine was initially somewhat dismissive of Higo, but the two continued to converse, and Higo grew more interested in Palpatine, eventually recruiting him to spy into the politics of Naboo to ensure Topalo's win. Palpatine's father learned of their friendship and immediately attempted to put a stop to it, offering veiled threats to Higo. Higo told Palpatine of this, enraging the boy, and telling him he had to do whatever it took to break free of his father's control. On a yacht, with the entire family on board, Palpatine's animosity towards his father came to a climax, and he embraced the dark side, slaughtering them all. Higo told him no one would ever learn of his involvement in the crime, and formally inducted him into the Sith Order, for Higo was actually Darth Plagueis, the sole Dark Lord of the Sith. Palpatine began his training under Plagueis, and was named Darth Sidious. Palpatine's training was brutal, often forced to go without food, water, or sleep. He was trained in lightsaber combat, and even though he showed tremendous skill, he believed that the Sith had grown beyond the need for lightsabers. The Force, however, was where Palpatine was truly a master, becoming one of the most powerful Force users to ever live, existing as a living expression of the dark side of the Force. Plagueis, of course, was concerned about the relationship between himself and his apprentice, as it was traditional in Sith history for an apprentice to rise up and slay their master. Wishing to break the cycle of the Rule of Two, Plagueis wished for no secrets or jealousy between the two of them, and that Plagueis would exist in the shadows and Palpatine in the spotlight. 
Thus, Palpatine would also continue to learn the ways of politics and leadership in order to take over the galaxy and bring about the return of the Sith Empire. Palpatine kept a fairly low profile during these years so that he could focus on his Sith training. As part of his training, Palpatine was given a young boy to train as an assassin who would come to be known as Darth Maul. Palpatine breaks the rule of two himself by making Maul a Sith Lord. When Palpatine was 30, he and Plagueis decided it was time to begin Palpatine's full political career. Arranging the assassination of the current senator of Naboo, Palpatine was quickly elected to replace him. Once in the Senate on Coruscant, Palpatine continued to keep a low profile, passing on opportunities to be placed on powerful committees and boards. Instead, he focused on gaining a reputation as an intellectual, writing essays and proposing theories that would be taught in various leading universities. However, Palpatine did begin a plan to pit the Senate against the Trade Federation, including an implication that they were involved in the former senator's assassination. This plan would later blossom into the trade blockade of Naboo, the Separatist conflict, and the Clone Wars. Palpatine continued to be a popular public opponent to the Trade Federation, but also in private in his guise as Darth Sidious, began working with the Trade Federation. Darth Plagueis continued to work in the background in tandem with Palpatine as part of the Sith Grand Plan to eradicate the Jedi and tear down the Republic. As the Naboo Crisis was underway, Palpatine continued to gain popularity in the Senate and worked to undermine the current Supreme Chancellor. Darth Maul was now a fully trained Sith assassin and was sent to wrap up some loose ends on Naboo. After a duel with two Jedi Knights, Maul was presumed dead, and Palpatine was in need of another apprentice. Fortunately, Palpatine was becoming close with the Jedi Master, Count Dooku, who was quickly becoming disillusioned with both the Republic and the Jedi Order. Palpatine definitely saw potential in Dooku as a Sith Lord, but before he left the Jedi Order, Dooku informed Palpatine of the suspicion among the Jedi Council that the young boy from Tatooine, Anakin Skywalker, was the Jedi Chosen One. Palpatine was shocked at this revelation, as he had sensed no force potential in the young boy when he first met him. Palpatine took an interest from then on in Anakin, and as the Naboo Crisis winded down, Palpatine was all but secured in his election to Supreme Chancellor. Now that Palpatine was going to be in a position of power, he knew that he no longer had any need for Plagueis, and that electing him as co-chancellor as Plagueis wanted would only cause harm to the plan. The night before the election, Palpatine plied Plagueis with alcohol and murdered him. With Plagueis' death, Palpatine instituted a new rule of one that would resemble the rule of two as far as apprentices were concerned, but he would remain the sole leader of the Sith, with no chance for an apprentice to take his place. As the years went by, Palpatine would take on the former Jedi, Count Dooku, as his apprentice, and would use him to begin the Separatist Crisis, causing further strain on both the Republic and the Jedi Order. The beginning of the Clone Wars allowed Palpatine to extend his term as Supreme Chancellor, and the wars themselves, culminating with Order 66 and the Massacre of the Jedi, allowed Palpatine to reform the Republic into an Empire. The Clone Wars would also leave Count Dooku dead, and the Chosen One of the Jedi, Anakin Skywalker, fallen into the dark side and serving as Sidious's apprentice. Darth Vader would quickly be horribly burned and mutilated at the end of the war, becoming the perfect lapdog of a servant to the Sith Emperor. During the Galactic Empire's reign, the galaxy was reformed under a totalitarian regime, and Sidious was all set to usher in a new golden age of the Sith. Unfortunately for him, Vader's son, Luke, with the assistance of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, rose up against him and led the rebellion against the Empire. In the climax of their conflict, Luke was beaten and overwhelmed by the powerful Sith Lord, and was continually tortured with forced lightning while his father looked on. Remarkably, the same motivation that caused Anakin to join the Sith, protecting a loved one from dying, also caused him to turn against his master, throwing Palpatine down the reactor shaft while both were being electrocuted. Anakin died in his son's arm, and Darth Sidious was no more. 
As I said, this is a drastically truncated form of Palpatine's history, as he has been a principal character throughout the entire run of Star Wars. I wanted to focus on his early years prior to Episode 1 to give casual fans some insight into what made Palpatine become a Dark Lord of the Sith. Without a doubt, Palpatine is one of the most cunning and deceptive masterminds in all of Star Wars, and ranks highly amongst all fictional villains. Well, of course it is traditional that good triumphs over evil, and Palpatine was partly brought down by his own hubris. It's rare to find a villain with such a long history of success as Palpatine. <laughs>